Hi, I'm Peter Matthews with Firehouse, and we're here with Jason Burt with L3 Harris, and we're here to talk about some of the technology and the implementation that they're rolling out for public safety. So, Jason, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background with L3 Harris? Sure. Uh, Jason Burt. I've been with uh, L3 Harris for 25 years now. Uh, started out in system engineering, moved over to product management, and now I'm part of our sales engineering team. Um, we're out here showing off uh, some of our new technology um, that can benefit the uh, fire market. Great. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, excited to kind of learn about what's going on today. Again, uh, as we're finding, you know, uh, better ways to communicate to fire ground, the technology that you guys are rolling out is, is key to that. So, can you elaborate on how the firefighter feedback has been integrated into the development process of the new technologies like NFPA uh, 1802 and the compliant um, radios and the mics? Sure, sure. So, NFPA 1802 really defined the uh, the environment of where these radios need to to. Um, operate in from a condition perspective, right? Okay. Heat, water, drops, obviously it's got to be a rugged radio to be able to support that. Um, so we did an extensive voice of the customer um, as part of that to make sure that our radio met those requirements. But on top of that, we had to kind of take it to the next level further uh, in terms of how the radios are used by firefighters. So obviously top display, the ability to uh, handle these with gloved hand operations, volume knob, channel selector. Um, you'll notice I also have a color display here. Um, that color display we call that visual zone indicator. Um, basically, we've pulled that up to the top of the radio. So now if this is tucked in my turnout coat uh, and I'm actually on the fire ground scene, I can actually switch channels. SWAT 2, Fire 1. I get voice enunciation of not only what, how I'm using the radio, but the also color code. So if I'm with my team and I see a bunch of red, 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 and I've got a guy on green, we know that he's not on the correct channel. All right. Great heads up display. Yeah. Some of the other things that we've done, obviously with the, the front keypad, we've integrated the ability to navigate the menu into the uh, the, the nav cluster here. Um, buttons are click buttons, so you can actually feel those with gloved hand operations. Um, the radio is durable, again, handles drops, handles water, uh, and handles the heat. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, a, a rugged device at this environment, uh, you know, with all the heat testing and everything else that's been done, you know, that's key. So, so what role, um, does broadband and mission critical push to talk play as far as uh, the future of um, fire safety communication? Sure, sure. So, you know, we actually have a couple of uh, XL 400s that are operating at the show here on the AT&T booth. Um, they are actually operating in a mission critical push to talk mode. Uh, FirstNet is rolling out that MCPTT um, based operation, so you can actually take the antenna off. Uh, completely and push to talk that device over an AT&T network. Um, we recognize the fact that uh, as uh, agencies are rolling out, um, a lot of times the, the incidents occur where they may or may not have coverage. And so as part of that, um, we want to roll in the ability to support FirstNet operations and other carriers um, into our devices so that they can still use their comms equipment on the fire ground scene, no matter where that occurs. Okay. And, and again, that's great, right? As it, 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 you know, this, this country is evolving, there's so many new buildings coming up, there's developments in, in the middle of nowhere that that are just popping up and fire safety um, communications are key and, and public safety, not just fire safety. So, so let me ask, how does the integration of data streaming uh, capabilities, uh, we're talking GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, how is all of that uh, brought into situational awareness and decision making on the fire ground? Sure, so you know, think of this as almost a communications hub. Uh, that's sitting on your hip, right? Yeah. Um, we have Wi-Fi, GPS built into these devices. So now think of it as uh, you know, almost a hotspot that you're carrying around with you. So now if I have a thermal imaging camera that I want to tether to this device, I could actually stream that information from the edge and feed that back to an incident commander that could use it. Um, we also support standard protocols like Bluetooth. Um, so now we have the ability to tether onto, say, an SCBA uh, that might be operating on the fire ground scene. Um, we can actually pull that in mask audio, route it directly to the radio, and shoot it over the system. Um, you may hear this radio talking here. This is actually a, a radio. You notice we took the antenna off. Um, this traffic is actually coming from uh, uh, the Houston area. So obviously we're here in Indianapolis. It's a little bit outside of Houston's coverage range. 1,400, 1,500 miles. Right. Um, that LTE module that we talked about in here is actually built in for us to be able to monitor these comms. It doesn't matter if we're inside the jurisdiction or outside, all of those comms can be fed through LTE and brought back into this radio no matter where you are. So in that situation, you, you know, we have all these natural disasters that are popping up. So, you know, if, you're, if your department's deployed a thousand miles away to help out with an incident, you're, you're still maintaining communications. That's right. That's right. We can program this radio to work on local channels wherever you're going or simply switch it into LTE mode and monitor your home channels uh, okay. no matter where you're going. Okay, great. Thank you. So, next question for you is, uh, what inspired the development of the uh, public address system? Yeah. Um, and how does that integrate in with the technology? So, you know, as, as I mentioned, we were doing voice to the customer, right? And a lot of that is going out and doing ride-alongs with fire agencies, trying to see how they operate the radio so that we could design the radio to work with them. Um, 
you know, Bluetooth protocol, the ability to tether that in mask audio. Uh, what we notice on the fire ground scene is that um, as they were doing their operations, right, they work in teams, um, they're very close proximity to each other. And so when they're trying to communicate with their masks on, their, muff their audio is kind of muffled, right? It was hard yeah. for you to hear what I was trying to tell you what we're, we're trying to do here. Um, so we kind of took this back to our engineers and looked at, well, how do we take that in mask audio and not just push it out over the system, but also have it come out of my own mic so that you can hear what I'm trying to say to you. Okay. Obviously with the masks on, the ears are exposed, but your mouth is muffled there. So um, that's really where that, uh, that feature was born out of. Um, if you want, I can do a quick demonstration yeah, here. Yeah, it would be great to hear that and, and see how it works. Yeah, so again, this is a, the 3M Scott Vision C5 mask. They're one of our partners uh, in the MCA. And so um, what I'm gonna do is power this on. As soon as I power it on, I want you to notice how quickly um, that my mic is gonna show me a little blue indicator light that, okay. that it's connected and then we'll see blue on the mask as well. So I'm gonna power this on. It's gonna give me a little status check. All right, you see the blue? Now this mic is hot, all right? So if I key up um, and I'm gonna put the mask on and I'll have a, a conversation and we're gonna have that audio come out of that mic uh, right there. Radio test, one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. It's nice, nice and clear. Test one, two. Test one, two. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if I'm on air and we're trying to talk to each other, I have to raise my amplitude so that you can hear what I'm saying. We actually turned on that amp feature now. All I did was a simple toggle switch on the radio, so now you can actually hear what I'm saying. So if I need you to go and take that door down, I can communicate with you and you can hear me because your ears are exposed. That's the XLPA function. And that's phenomenal. Again, the clarity in the audio with, with the background noise, whether it's saws or breaking windows, water flowing, you know, any environment that you would find in a fire ground, to be able to kind of, you know, bring that into really con concise communications is key in order to get the mission done. That's right. And, and now, and again, I can turn that on and off. So if I turn this switch here. Keep speak off. I'll get a voice enunciation that it's actually off now, okay. uh, but I can toggle that back on. So as we're communicating with each other, it doesn't necessarily have to go out over the radio system. We can talk to each other normally. And when I'm ready to talk to command, I can PTT my radio and talk to command. Okay. Great. Again, very intuitive. And the fact that everything connects, right, there's almost redundancy to ensure that it's on. I mean, that's good because there is so much going on. And as long as that takes is as long as it's going to take you to put your mask on as you're getting ready to head into the house. So, you know, that's one thing we learned with fire is that if it's not easy to use, it's probably not going to be used. So yeah. we yeah. wanted to make it as easy as possible. Yep, yeah. great, great, um, great implementation there. So um, personal PA systems, how does that contribute to enhancing uh, communication uh, with command and then also, you know, bringing the incident under control? Yeah, so I mean, instead of uh, folks having to strain to communicate, you saw how easy it was for me to talk to you. When I didn't have the amplification on, I had to yell at you. Um, so we're trying to take that stress level down um, when it comes to operating on the fire ground scene. But really because firefighters are working in teams with each other, um, we want them to be able to communicate with each other, not only over the radio system when they're talking back to command, but you know while they're taking care of the tasks at hand. Okay, great, great. So final question for you today is, um, what is the MCA um, and how does L3 Harris uh, put that into position in the fire service uh, to create collaboration amongst everybody involved in the answer. Sure. So the MCA stands for Mission Critical Alliance. Uh, we actually launched this program back in 2019, um, so pre, prior to COVID. Uh, and it really is a group of companies that are working together to solve bigger problems in the market. Uh, you know, obviously the uh, L3 Harris, we're focused on mission critical communications. Um, we don't build SCBA masks, but there's partners out there that do and do a great job of that. Yeah. And so, you know, by partnering with them with this Bluetooth functionality to be able to turn on that XLPA function, that's a key benefit to the market that, that firefighters can use every day. Um, we do the same thing on Incident Command. We've actually got a partner called Adashi Systems that builds an Incident Command platform where we can actually monitor the health and the safety of the firefighter directly from that platform. So when a commander pulls up on scene, he can see emergency notifications. He can see low battery alerts. He can see low air alarms that are coming out of the air bottles. Um, all of that can be fed back through our, again, communications hub on your hip feed that back to an incident commander and they can manage that incident more effectively. Um, so those are kind of examples of what we're doing for the fire market, but the MCA goes well beyond that. We actually have the ability to support different uh, protocols like asset management, mapping, um, GPS updates, all of those things can be uh, you know, basically supported by the MCA. So really again, it's, it's bringing everything, right? There's, there's a hub and within that hub, 
all the data that's being collected, whether it's communication, situational awareness areas, um, the data points on the firefighters' health and wellness, time that they've been in there, uh, you know, the environment that they're in themselves. It's fascinating to see where we're at, you know, just in the last 10 years with technology. And what I really like about this, again, you know, is getting the firefighters involved from the very get-go. Um, it's almost like it's a firefighter built radio. They just used L3 to kind of come up with the technology, but, but taking their feedback, what they actually need, what they can actually use. And like you said, if it doesn't work, they're not going to use it. If it's not easy to use, they're not going to use it. So each step of this process here, you've taken into account what the fire service truly needs and, and you've given it to them. You put it on the market and it's on fire trucks, right? Now. That's right. That's right. And, and again, we're all open standards, open systems. So we publish APIs. Other companies do the same. Um, that's where we're working together to collaborate and provide that enhanced capability that instead of buying it all from one company, you can do it from multiple companies because they're best of breed of yeah. what they do in their market. So um, we don't have competitors in the MCA. We all work together to service the various markets that we're involved in. So. Love it. Extension of public safety. That's right. So great. that's right. Jason, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Really excited to be here at L3 today and, and just kind of learn about what's going on. And we're excited to see what the next couple of years bring. So thank Fantastic. you so much. Yep. Thank you very much.